Hello, everybody, and welcome to 720 Degree Tennis. I'm your host, Bill Patton. Excited to have Robert Landsdorp on the show, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time. And as you may be aware, Robert has developed players such as Tracy Austin, Pete Sampras, Lindsay Davenport, and Maria Sharapova. But, you know, I'm also going to ask him some questions about players who might not be household names. But, Robert, hello. How are you today? I'm great. What do you you want to know? All right. Well, first off, you know, where are you located and what, what's your current, you know, status? I mean, how, how often are you teaching? What's, what are you doing these days? Well, I had some physical problems, so I'm not uh, doing much of the hitting myself anymore. I have people that uh, do it for me, you know, but I'm still teaching quite a bit. Some, sometimes, uh, more than others, depending if I get people from out of town, depending if I feel lazy. So it's not uh, like it was uh, 10 years ago, you know, when I was doing everything myself. I do some of the hitting myself, but not uh, not all the time. But I'm still teaching some some weeks quite a bit, some weeks uh, not as much. It all, all depends. But, yeah, I still do the same thing. I still teach basically the same concept as I uh, that I did like uh, at 10, 20, 30 years ago. It's still basically the same. Yeah. In fact, let's launch off into that in a moment. But where are you located? I'm uh, I'm teaching on a private court in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, which is uh, sort of west of Los Angeles. I got divorced, you know, about, uh, geez, what is it now, 11, I think over 11 years ago. I was made for 32 years, and I got divorced, and it really screwed me up. I mean, I was really sort of devastated. So I, was, I quit teaching, did everything, and then and this guy told me, he says, hey, Robert, you can, uh, if you want to teach, you know, you can teach on my court, this private court. So I could sort of do my own thing a little bit, and that's uh, that's where I had been. Was, you know, I taught the guy, actually, like 30, 40 years ago. You know, it was funny. His name was Joe Garazzi. And so I have been on his court for about, uh, I don't know, about 10 years or so. So I teach on a private court, which is good for me because I can tell somebody to shut up, you know. And I'm a parent, and I don't really have to worry about management, you know. Good. That is perfect. I mean, that's right in your sweet spot. You know, in case you, people should know that Robert threatened to tell me to shut up during the uh, during the pre-show. <laughs> and... Um, no, I'm fine with that. Way back, I was actually toying with the idea of bringing my son to come see you for a day to see what you would say, but you know, he wasn't he wasn't that into it. He didn't know what he was missing out on on that one. But now, so now you've been teaching the same stuff for 20, 30 years. That sort of flies in the face of which is really funny, the so-called modern tennis technique which, you know, harkens back to the 20s when people Started hitting big top spin, right? Well, so I, I don't, I don't go that far back. I'm not a historian at all, so I don't know what they, what they did in the 1920s. So don't worry about it. But I really have not. I really have changed, though. I mean, you know, I'm not teaching exactly the same that I did in the 70s because the 70s and now has has changed a great deal. One of the main things that has changed, besides the power in the rackets and everything, is the grips. And I think the grips is probably one of the most important uh, parts of the development. And I think what has happened over the years is that uh, people have, you know, they start, when we when we played, when we started, we always had to have the racket at up above the wrist a little bit, okay? So our grips were always more continental eastern. I mean, in the 70s, you really did not have anybody with a western or, or extreme uh, crazy grip. It didn't, it didn't exist, actually. Uh, so I think the strokes were a lot cleaner, and I think that it was, I felt it was a lot easier to teach in the 70s than it was in these days because of the grips. Actually, in the late 70s, that's sort of when the grips started changing a little bit, and the Western grip was something new. You know, I was like, oh, well, what the hell is this? What, what, what are you doing? And I would not teach kids with the Western grip. I wouldn't take them. If they had a Western grip, I would tell them, go somewhere else. I'm not teaching you. And this this has to let me interrupt a little bit myself, and because they, if, if you have a coach that thinks he can, they can change a grip, a grip on a kid, he is dreaming. It doesn't work. If the kid starts with the, with, the, with an extreme grip, by the time that kid is 12 years old, you're not going to change it into a regular Western grip. It does not work. 
So it's very important that you start with the wrong grip. That's where you have these people with these crazy grips. You cannot change them. I had a kid that was number one. He was number one in the 14th in the nation. He was 12, I think. I don't a long time ago, okay? This is like 30. Well, my memory doesn't go that far. Anyway, he asked me, can, can he change his grip to a more uh, 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 like a Western grip? And I said, is even his two-handed back that was extreme. And I go, sure, you know. What did I know? I worked for six months with the kid. You know, he was very talented now. You know, don't get me wrong. He was number one in the 14th in the nation. The kid was good. Mm-hmm. I worked for about six months and changed his grip to a more great, looked great. He played one tournament. He was right back with his old grip, and he never changed. He went into the pros, never did pretty well. I really sort of struggled because of that, you know. And uh, and so I'm very, very, very reluctant to change grips. I might do it on a, on a kid that is maybe eight, nine, maybe. But once they're mm. about 12 years old, uh, the, the grip change doesn't work. Well, you're ta- so you're talking more about a major grip change. From, I mean, obviously, you can no. learn a very subtle grip change of maybe no. a few degrees. No. Even a subtle grip change is difficult. You think it's easy. It's not easy. Once, once somebody is, uh, if, if you have a 14-year-old kid, let's say, you know, and he, he has an extreme Western grip, and he, for some some reason, I don't say, you say, let's go to a Western grip. Very difficult. Even the slightest grip change is very difficult. You know, I, I, I sometimes have him do all kinds of different. I have him, I, I'm into slicing. You know, I'm not, not that I do slide all the time, but I am, I'm into forehand slices, backhand slices. I like to do it on the forehand side because nobody teaches a forehand slide. They all think it's a uh, boogaloo, you know, you cannot teach a kid a forehand slide. Why they do this, I still have no idea because I think it's very stupid not to teach a kid to hit a forehand slide. And I think it's good because there is a grip change, which is actually interesting because if you teach them a slice and they hit a pretty good slice, the grip is more continental. Then when you have them hit a regular forehand with the rest of the grip, the ball goes in the ball at the net because they have to learn where the racket face is. So I'm into that. But it, it has changed in the 70s. The 70s was easy. You had an eastern grip. And not many people had a had a, had a kind of down grip anymore. The eastern grip was in. And the follow-through was up and high. I saw a picture of Pete Champers when he was like 9 or 10. It sits somewhere on the on the Internet. I don't know. And he follows through with both his arms up and his arm all the way to his chin. Like a perfect follow through for those days because you hit straight to the ball. There was not really a lot of top speed. The best way of hitting a forehand. And the back was basically the same. That changed. And then it could change, I don't know, when when Marat Safin won the US Open, he beat Pete in the finals. And Pete was flying a lot of his forehands. And mm-hmm. uh, so I told him, I told him, I said, Pete, try to follow through a little bit lower. You know, don't follow through as high around your neck. And mm-hmm. I'm not claiming that he won the he won the US Open because of that. But the next year, he actually played better, and his balls didn't fly as much. You know, and mm-hmm. so even if you look at a guy like Feather, Feather's grip is sort of towards the uh, towards the eastern grip, but he doesn't follow through up high. He, he sometimes does depending on what the height of the ball, but he follows throughout his waist. And then I think it's the biggest change in my uh, in my book. Oh, I don't have a book. Sorry. In my eyes, that's probably the biggest change is where's the follow through. The more extreme the grip goes, the more you have to follow through down towards your pocket. When you have an extreme western grip, you can't really follow through up high. It doesn't really work. And the, the old timers are still doing it. Like what's to say, Serena. See, Serena was taught to come up high on the follow through. She doesn't have a, she has an eastern grip, you know, and, and she doesn't have this follow through down. And so she hits a perfect, perfect ball. Her ball doesn't fly like Pete did. And, uh, and, uh, and she has more power and she knows what to do with. And so then the grip change came and it came. And then the, the lately, whatever it is for the last 10 years, it's this top spin. Everybody's a top spin, you know. It it, it mm-hmm. drives me nuts because it drives me nuts. That's why I call that ball an academy ball because if you go to an academy, any academy you go to, I don't 
care who it is. If you hit a ball in the net because you drive it, you're paid to hit it six, eight feet over the net to top spin. Some kids even put a rope about six, eight feet above the net so you can hit over the rope. I mean, you've got to do nuts to do that. <laughs> 